This is the Paying It Forward Podcast, Episode 3. As the facilitator of a program like that, what I've learned is that as the mentee, you need to take real accountability for what you want to accomplish, how you need inputs, and how you show up to every single meeting, as well as how you follow up from all of those interactions and meetings as well. Hi, and welcome to the Paying It Forward podcast. My name is Steve Richards. Thank you for listening. I believe if you want to attain a C-level position in your career, you need to understand what it takes to achieve that level of leadership. When you have access to successful entrepreneurs and senior executives who want to help you develop the skills and traits to become a great leader, it's like having your own mastermind group to mentor and guide you. In a nutshell, that's our podcast. In just a few moments, we'll sit down with Heather Moyer in part one of a two-part interview. In this first part, we'll talk with Heather about her entrepreneurial spirit. We'll also talk about mentoring. The relationship between the mentor and the mentee, who has what accountability, responsibility, and ownership. We'll also discuss relationships and why she believes relationships are the most important thing. We'll also discuss why hiring and getting it right the first time is critically important. And then we'll touch on self-awareness, self-starting, and taking the initiative. My guest today is Heather Moyer. Heather is the president, CEO, and founder of HNM Systems, providing direct hire, contract to hire, professional placement, and consulting services to the telecommunications, utilities, and IT sectors. Heather has grown HNM Systems revenue 25 times since its first year. Under her leadership, the company has received several awards, including Inc. 5000's fastest growing private companies two years in a row. Prior to founding HNM Systems, Heather served as the executive officer of a technical staffing firm in the San Diego area. She led the company to achieve 900% growth over a six-year period, and the company was subsequently named one of San Diego's 100 fastest-growing private companies six years in a row. Heather is an active philanthropist and member of the community. She sits on the board of nonprofit Echo in the Valley and is a member of Peers Network, the Entrepreneurs Organization, and the Young Presidents Organization. Heather's been named Top 40 Under 40 by the San Diego Daily Transcript in 2017 and by San Diego Business Journal in 2018. In 2020, she was a finalist for the San Diego Business Journal's CEO of the Year and Businesswoman of the Year. She's the proud wife of a firefighter paramedic and also adoring mother of two children. Heather, it is my distinct honor and pleasure to welcome you to the podcast. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. When you were younger, did you always have a dream of starting your own business? Well, I absolutely always had an entrepreneurial spirit. Uh, the first selling opportunity I had was actually as a little girl. I must have been about eight years old. I started to develop and craft jewelry in my basement. Mm. Oh, cool. And I got a little table and set it up outside the grocery store in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania and started selling my jewelry to the incoming grocery shoppers. Smart to get them on the way in on this, as opposed to the way out. <laughs> there wasn't any legislation at that point. <laughs> able to do that. Child, child labor laws, let alone selling out of the back of your trunk. Exactly. How did, how did this endeavor go? Yeah, wildly successful. Not quite the organization that I have today, but um, definitely profitable immediately. So H&N Systems being in the business of providing services and direct hires or contract to hires or placement and consulting services to its clients, I look at it more, in, given certainly that you're in the technology or telecommunications utility space, um, I really see this as a tech company, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, what made you get into tech? Um, you know, really, it's a it's a really unique story. I was working for another staffing company here in San Diego that was focused in automotive finance. And I was really young, 27 years old, constantly on an airplane flying back and forth to customers nationwide. And I happened to be fogged into SFO one night, um, which anybody who's traveled from SFO has probably been fogged in there. Very much. And I started chatting with uh, a mechanical engineer who was located here in San Diego, who actually had deployed the first outdoor wireless system in 1998 here in San Diego for Sprint. Oh, wow. 
And he started talking to me about everything related to wireless and wireline and the future of mobility. And he piqued my interest and he piqued my interest for two reasons. One, I'm inspired by technology. Um, I'm inspired by the ability of technology to connect people. And I am also just authentically inspired by relationships and connection. Mm. And so for me, this was a beautiful marriage of both innovation and technology and the ability to connect people both through technology and employment opportunity. So you have this conversation as serendipitous. How did you go from thought idea to launching HNM? So I went and met with him and his wife, and we talked a lot about my background as it relates to staffing and talent acquisition and people management. And we talked a lot about his background related to engineering and both electrical and mechanical. And I really spent the next 12 months researching the industry, thinking really hard if I wanted to leave a rapidly growing organization, which at that point I was the president of at a very young age, um, for someone I love and respected so much, and really go out on my own, start over again. I was just recently married. My husband is a firefighter paramedic. He had taken a leave to go to paramedic school. We had just bought a house. It was absolutely the worst timing you could ever think of. And yet, there it was. You know, there was this great opportunity. And I am so passionate about people and passionate about technology. And I just felt that this was an opportunity I couldn't miss. Certainly working for utilities, everybody knows what it's like to turn on a light or, you know, open the tap and get some water. But that whole telecom space can be very challenging. Yeah, it's very technical. And it's also male dominated. It, it is predominantly male dominated. Take me back to the beginning. Someone who sees an idea, capitalizes on an idea, starts a company. As an entrepreneur, you had to hire your first several people. You had to get a contract, something like that to get launched. Tell me what it was like to be a solo entrepreneur when you started, to the first employee you hired, to the first contract you got. Talk me through the leadership angle of that. Like, How did you really sort of organize yourself to be a leader? Because you had to become one based on starting the company. Great question. Yeah, I definitely had to create some thought leadership. So first was self-education. The second thing that I did was, and Steve, I think you were on this list. I wrote a big piece. Of, I took a big piece of yellow paper and I wrote everyone that I had worked with in my career who was a champion of mine of sorts. So oh. anybody that I respected, that I felt like, I valued their opinion. I wrote their name down on a yellow piece of paper and I called them. And I actually spent every Friday calling people, talking to them about what I was doing and asking what they knew about telecommunications, what they knew about utility, what they knew about starting a business, and if they knew anyone that anyone or any resources that could help me. And I had such beautiful contributions. Um, you know, the one of the previous uh, VPs and, and CIOs of Toyota sent me a beautiful book called Your First 90 Days. You oh, know, nice. she's still been a wonderful mentor to me. Um, I have found in my career that people are so willing to help, you have to be willing to ask. And sometimes ah. to your point, that's a very scary place to be. So started with that yellow sheet of paper and then recognized that I didn't have any direct leads. There wasn't really anybody on my champion list that had telecommunications or utility connection. So I went and created a go-to-market strategy. I looked at who the, the players were in the telecommunications space, who was the ecosystem of wireless and wireline. And I found the number one company in the industry and I followed their head of, at that point, I think he was head of small cell. And I listened to a speech that he gave and I picked up the phone and I called him and said, here's who I am, here's what I'm doing, here's why I can help you and give me one shot, I'll show you what I got and wow. then let's talk about the contract. And that one shot, that first shot for me was Disney World. Oh, wow, let's start yeah. small. So you, the first thing I heard in there was certainly seeking out information, but you were seeking out some sort of mentoring. So yes. if we transition into the topic of mentoring, it sounds to me like you did not only the individual research, you identified potential people. Some could have been or may still be mentors. How, how important in that early going were mentors? 
I think mentors have been um, a key to my success my entire life, really from when I was a young girl all the way to you know my current position. I still have people mentor me. For me, there are so many blind spots just as a human being, as an individual, as a business leader, as a mom, as a wife, you know, you have a certain peripheral vision and you need people to come in and help to introduce different ideas, different frameworks, um, different perspectives. I think that's so important and, and really has been great for me. I would say I absolutely would not be here had I not been mentored. Interestingly, I don't know that I've ever asked anybody to mentor me, right? It was never a conversation. Will you be my mentor? You approached. Sounds like pretty quickly. Like a lot of people are afraid. I think that's the number one reason people are just afraid, but that's just my own opinion. I'd like to hear your opinion. What do you think holds people back from even engaging in a mentoring process? I, I, I think you're right. I think there is a fear of rejection. I think that's human nature in any situation that you would be fear of, a fear of potentially being rejected of mentorship. I think also sometimes we don't feel that we deserve a seat at the table. So if we ask somebody to mentor us, we maybe don't feel worthy of that time and mentorship. So I think those things hold people back. Um, to your earlier question, I didn't actually have a conversation where I asked anybody to mentor me. Rather, I found people that I respected and valued that had something I felt deficient in, whether that was executive leadership, vision, you know, sales strategy, technology, integration. I found those people that had something where I felt deficient and I investigated out of curiosity, why they had something I didn't, how I could accelerate myself in those areas, and at some points, did I even need to, right? So there were a lot of different questions. What I interpreted was, don't be afraid. But I think most people are afraid to simply ask. I think more people would want to help anybody, any coworker, just get better in any way, shape, or form they can. So part of mentoring kind of segues me into relationship building or networking. How important is relationships or relationship building? Well, I think relationships are the number one most important thing in life, business and personally. That's my belief system. For me, when I started building new relationships, I think relationships are so important, and I think it's important to think about how you come into your own relationship. So for example, with me, with my whole staff, I will say, let's do something first for somebody else before we ask them to do something for us. Yeah. And I want that to be authentic. Don't do something because you're looking for something in return, but let's show up for the people that wanna work with us, that need to be placed, that need a staffing services provider, that need consulting services, and let's solve a problem for them. And I almost hesitate to use the phrase solve a problem because I think it's overused from a sales yeah. perspective, sure. but let's meet a need. Um, let's, let's grow a capability for a customer. Let's solve a problem. You know, let's do something impactful and let's start the relationship where we bring significant value before we ask for them to give us back significant value. And I find that when we come to relationships in wanting to authentically give, not out of obligation, that it's so well received. Hmm. And that has just been a huge success for me in the business and just in life in general. Heather, how are you personally involved in mentoring and giving back to various groups and people? Yeah, I actually run a mentorship program for the Entrepreneurs Organization um, in collection and collaboration with uh, the Young Presidents Organization, their YPO Gold, and a local organization here called the Chairman's Roundtable. And they're all pro bono mentorship programs yeah. in which the mentee has an opportunity to work side by side generally with a C-suite executive to help to establish a significant goal. And what I would say as the facilitator of a program like that, what I've learned is that as the mentee, you need to take real accountability for what you want to accomplish, how you need inputs, 
and how you show up to every single meeting, as well as how you follow up from all of those interactions and meetings as well. I think sometimes one of the deterrents for being mentored and mentoring somebody else is that it's unclear who is responsible in that relationship for kind of showing up to the table. And the relationships that I've seen be very successful are the ones that the mentee has really clear expectations, really clear goals, and really consistent follow up and follow through on what's discussed and inspired. Somebody shows up to do something and then all of a sudden they're paired with a C-suite executive. They're not getting paid. They're, they're here to learn to be better. Are these younger workers already or are they actually, you know, not high school students? I'm assuming these are these older folks. Well, I, I've seen it in all walks. So, you know, anybody from high school, junior college, okay. uh, you know, in a college program, all the way through, you know, an entrepreneur right. running a $5 million business who's being mentored okay. by, a, you know, a chief executive officer who just sold a $500 million business, right? So I think there's areas and opportunities for mentorship along the path of life professionally and otherwise. Generally, when a mentee engages a mentor, it's because for whatever reason and right or wrong, they've decided they are stuck or they have plateaued. They have leveled up to their own capacity and ability and they generally need someone to help them get unstuck or to just kind of push them over that line. So if I were recapping this, I'd say from a mentoring standpoint, seek, don't be afraid, expect a rejection, but don't take it personally. If you really want to get ahead, find those people who have either been there and done that, who are willing to turn around and say, yeah, I can bring you along, or people who have a larger corporation than you or a larger role than you, whatever it may be, where you aspire to get to where you want to go, these people can help you. And there's plenty of people around, it sounds like. Absolutely. And offer to mentor others. Yeah, I think, you know, that it was interesting because I was going to ask you that question. Since you're involved in it, you've obviously had both ends of this, this spectrum Anything inside that 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 uh, got you, scared you, you just, you're willing to have a conversation on a variety of topics with people, and you're willing to give first, which I like, this whole servant side, and then you receive through the joy of just the conversation or helping people get from where they are to where they want to go. Do you find in that process, do you find that process frustrating at all? Yeah, I don't find it frustrating when something difficult happens. I just look for something new. I don't necessarily look at it like a roadblock. I look at it as everything happens for my own good and for the good of who I'm supporting, showing up for, mentoring, so on and so forth. So I think that's a mindset. And we've talked a little bit here about, you know, the things that hold you back are generally related to this mindset of fear and scarcity. And I've really spent a lot of time in some ways uh, related to the pandemic, making sure that as a leader and just as a human being that I am operating out of a mindset of abundance and freedom and gratitude. Because what I found is gratitude and fear can't live together. So if I'm in gratitude and abundance, I'm really out of fear and scarcity. So as an entrepreneur and owner of a company, uh, I don't know if you're involved in every hiring decision. I'm assuming you are involved in most. Um, how, what do you look for when you're hiring people? What do you, what are you really after? Well, Steve, I think you nailed it earlier in our conversation when you said you look for somebody who is interested in taking ownership, in being self-accountable. I really look for folks who put the interest of others ahead of themselves. And that's a company core value here. So at H&M Systems, our number one core value is relentlessly people driven. And what that means is we consider the needs of other people mm. first, instead of necessarily the P&L of the business. Now, obviously we need to sure. remain profitable. We are in business. Um, but what I've found is there's such a significant impact in that. So for hiring for my own organization, the number one thing that I do is I determine whether an individual has their own core values established and if they meet our company core values. So I show up, I've got a set of core values. I interview with your team. 
you're looking for my values to see if you can decipher what they are. I'm not hiding them. Um, assumption is I can communicate. I can communicate those values. You can align those values up. Sounds like it might be a good fit culturally for your company, uh, me and your company. And then you would figure out where you're going to place me somewhere in the world. How important is it? How yep. important is it for me to be self-starting or you know, sort of taking the initiative? For my organization, because we're an entrepreneurial organization in major growth mode, if you're going to work for us at corporate, those are going to be two of the key most important skill sets. What I've learned in recruiting and staffing thousands and thousands of people all over the United States is, is that there are good fits with all different skill sets levels of aptitude and motivation everywhere. So really it's more about finding that fit and alignment. Now I will say the things that I that I don't give on is like I said, accountability, self-accountability, self-awareness, um, ability to take ownership, mm -hmm. responsibility, and respect. Oh yeah. It, it's it's funny, it just sounds like such such core basic stuff that you think people do every day, but I'm finding when I run into individuals, they could be a variety of ages, doesn't matter, locations. There's a lot of people that seem to take the assignment, get it done. May not be the most stellar assignment, might not be the most stellar result of that assignment, but they may start, they may not start. They may be assertive, they may ask questions, they may just produce something and you think, God, this isn't really that great. It's nice that you can sort of filter those people out up front. Is it difficult hiring people today? Do you find it harder than in the past? And and, it, and, it, and if you do, if you don't find, if you do, what do you think the difference is? I'm curious if you've been, been able to pinpoint a couple of different various things that you look to and you go, wow, yeah. I see a common thread like this and good or bad. I think actively recruiting A players has and will continue to always be hmm. difficult. So I think the performers, the people that perform at the top 10%, those people are generally always employed or working on something. They are hard to engage, they're selective, and they're very well networked. So oftentimes they don't need a whole lot of help in finding their next opportunity. Now all that to be said, you know, everybody at one point in their career is looking for an opportunity. So I think there's a lot of hustle that goes into attracting A players, maintaining relationships and what I call candidate pipelining and really developing those relationships to your earlier mm -hmm. point with potential A players and then making sure that you have that good alignment and core value and skill set. You've been listening to Heather Moyer on the Paying It Forward podcast. She is the president of HNM Systems. That is part one of a two-part interview. And as you listened, you can tell that she has quite a bit to say on the topic of mentoring, as well as relationship building and hiring and staffing her firm. In part two of the interview with Heather, you'll hear more about servant leadership, what it means to have a can-do and will-do attitude, how conflict and conflict resolution are handled, how you can stand out, communication, listening, and above all, philanthropy and giving back to the community. This information and more is in the show notes section of this episode on our website. Simply go to www.lessonsfromthecsuite.com forward slash episode three. You can follow our podcast for free on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, Stitcher, Libsyn, SoundCloud, or your favorite podcast player. If you happen to think this is a five-star worthy podcast and you leave a written review, I'll be sure to mention your name in an upcoming episode as a small way to say thank you. If you're not yet following this podcast, please go to www.lessonsfromthecsuite.com, sign up or subscribe, it's free, and you'll receive a PDF on various ways you can pay it forward every day. As always, if you have any questions or suggestions for the podcast, any guest suggestions, or any feedback in general, please send us an email at feedback at lessonsfromthecsuite.com or go to our website and submit a message directly. Thank you for listening. Until next time.